going on? Uh, today I got another artist for you. This guy's name is, uh, I'm going to mispronounce it for sure, Tano Bonfante, I believe is his name. I think he's a Spanish artist. Uh, as usual, we're going to go through some of the pieces uh, that I've found for him. Most of these I got off his art station. And I've included a link to his art station as well as his Instagram or whatever other social media I can find on him. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of these images. And So this first one right here is really interesting. I mean, I love this type of stuff. Just look at the, the massive amount of detail. I really like these like pen and ink comic book style drawings with like very minimal rendering they just they look really cool I think there's a another okay so this is his other version that's color let me see I think that there's another one no anyway we'll go we'll go through these other ones and then I think I have one with just like the line art um, this is another really cool one. He's got some great use of colors. He's using, it looks like kind of like a warm browns, warm oranges, but he desaturates the oranges quite a lot, especially in this piece. You know, most of these are like very desaturated brown oranges colors. And then we have like these highlights here, right? We've got some up here as well. So there's a couple of different things that he's doing here that, that makes this design work. And one of those is asymmetry, right? Like he has this big shape over here on this side. And then he has all these little shapes over here. So there's kind of this contrast between the two. In a lot of ways, design is a lot like, it's a lot like music, right? You have a steady beat and then you have something else that's contrasting against that steady beat in order to uh, to bring out the um, the essence of each element right so we know how big this shape is let me get my red here let me oops. so we know how big this shape is right here really in comparison to these other shapes something like this it's got this big shape to it and there's a lot of open space so this is very uh, it's very open right and then over here we have all these small shapes and they all seem to be going in a pattern right and then we have this one going this way this one going this way this 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 and so there's this nice contrast between these these two elements and you can really see what it is that I'm talking about if I if I take these shapes and block them out you can see the the red over here is this red block over here it's got a nice contrast against all these other shapes let's just fill it up and take a look at it Right, so you have that, and then again we have the same sort of thing going here. We have this going this way. We also have more leading lines going up, going up, and then of course we have this thing, which just it sits on our head like a hat. Um, and it's it's a really interesting element. I mean, it kind of reminds me of some of the stuff I've seen in in Thailand. Um, I've been living in Thailand for the past almost six months, and uh, one of the things I like is I like the the traditional wear, the traditional ornamentation that people wear, and um, this kind of reminds me of that a little bit, just because it's it's so odd looking uh, sitting on her head. It it feels like some sort of a headdress. Like he he probably took inspiration from you know some sort of tribal headdress and really when you look at when you look at his designs they do have this kind of mix between a sci-fi kind of aesthetic as well as like a 
so, something about it feels old. You know, there's a lot of face paint going on on these characters' faces. There's a lot of ornamentation. Face paint again, you know. There's no, it, it's like a mix between the old and the new. It's like some sort of a tribal cyberpunk kind of aesthetic, but it it's not the same sort of cyberpunk aesthetic that we usually see where it mixes these elements, you know. He de he's definitely takes some inspiration from Mobius. Let's look at some other ones. This one looks cool. This dude's got this crazy looking helmet on. Again, it's it's the same thing. It the shapes that he's using to kind of describe these metallic things that sit on his on their head is very iconic. It it just comes across as like the silhouette reads really well, you know? Like in the character designs you want to have your silhouettes being pretty readable. You know, you want to be able to look at them from a distance and be able to see the detail. I mean, not the detail, but you want to be able to know what it is. You know, if this is a character in a game, you want to be able to be able to see just that character for a split second and for you to know what role it is that that character plays. You know, if, are they a tank? Are they a spy or something like that, right? And as we get closer, it just gets cooler and cooler and cooler. And so that's kind of a, I would say that's a basic idea. That's a basic principle of good design. Good design is something that you can see it at a glance because you really only have like maybe two seconds to grab somebody's attention. And the more you look at it, it just looks cooler and cooler and cooler. I mean, we can go in here and we can look and see. This dude just looks crazy, right? He's got some sketches. I like how he uses this these really strong reds on this background. This he's using the strong reds on like a cool background. But this cool background, it has a lot of noise in it. I didn't notice that. Okay, this is just noise. So he put like a blue background there and then he put a noise on it and it's it's desaturated and then we get this effect. I mean, this would be really cool to use this in like a comic book. This sort of this sort of aesthetic or to bring some of this into my own work I would I think this would be cool so he's got this this strong red or I guess it's actually more of a pink it's actually more of a pink next to a red and then he's got it on this this background here and then he's using like these half tones he's using like little half tone um, Really, they're just brushes. Like, if you're in Clip Studio, this is Clip Studio paint that I'm using right now. And I can show you some of the brushes it is that I have. There's lots of different effects it is that you can create with different brushes, you know? So if we create a new layer, and we'll just, we'll just fill this layer. You can create different types of effects, right? Like you don't have to draw each individual thing. You can have the brushes do the work for you. Right? And that's what he's doing here. He's He's got some sort of brush that he's using and he's using that to actually show you that the form of the face is churning. So you can tell you can tell when an artist has like a lot of fun with the stuff it is that they do because they experiment with stuff like this stuff that you really wouldn't think about. You can see it here too. You know, like he's just, he's experimenting, he's having fun. And the results are awesome, you know. Again, you have, well, this guy looks like a Kuma or something from Street Fighter. Uh, more faces. Yeah. He's got more faces. He plays around with different his stuff looks really cool just because he plays around a lot with like the color of the of the pencil and how that contrasts against the the background in terms of color you know the stuff that he's doing and doing with the color 
is really nice. It's very subtle, but it makes a huge difference. And then he has the really good design on top of that. You know, again, it's that asymmetry. He has this big square here. And then he has like this little square. And then another square up here. Right. So he's playing around with big, medium, and small shapes. He's got big shapes, which is this big square over here. And then he's got these, this medium one, and then one right here. And he's actually got another one right here. This is the smallest one. I can't even draw a, a square with that. So he's got like one big one, two medium ones, and one small one. And then within that big one, he has it. He has different sections blocked off. He's got this design of these little shapes inside this big shape. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I think I'm going to really enjoy doing these videos. Because just looking at other people's work and thinking through the process that they're using, it just starts to feed your brain. And, you know, sometimes you can sit here and you can draw or you can do whatever project it is that you're working on. And uh, you can start to feel like you're running out of ideas. You don't, you start to feel like your designs are becoming generic. You know, like when I'm designing my characters for my comic or something like that, I think it's really helpful to look at what other people are doing and not copy what they're doing, but just understand the decisions that they're making. Understanding goes a long way. So we have another example of this same sort of thing. You know, you have like these, you have these circles, right? You have these circles here, 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 here. Here. And he's got them all at varying sizes. And I guess you could say the glove itself is like one big circular shape. So he has one big one. Medium, medium. Uh, he's got a couple more medium ones. And then he's got four small ones. And then another medium down here. And then another big one looks like he was going to put on his shoulder. <coughs> So he's using one shape as basically his general guide for how to build his character. He's, he's got these different shapes that he's using that is almost like this is a circular. It's almost like this is a circular character and this is a square based character. Right. And actually, I didn't even look at the look at his hair. Look at his hair. His hair is all squares. You know, they're not as they're just not as strictly lined as these. These are very artificial. So you could say that's another element of contrast. You've got you've got this stuff going on here. You've got these squares that are uh, they're not very straight edged. Right? They really don't even look like hair, but I mean it just looks cool, right? And then you have the squareness of his head. Right? Even at the even at the break of the the scalp, it's very square, it's very angular. You know? It's like a mix between being angular and, and kinda having an organic kind of break here. And then you have these squares. Which are way more rigid, right? So let's go ahead and let's move to the next one. I don't want to. I don't want to keep you guys for too long. Let's just blow through some of these. All right. So this guy looks kind of like a Jedi. Again, we have that asymmetry. You know, you can see the asymmetry is over here on this side, and then you have another one over here. All right. So you have like these different elements, and they're going down. Cascading the detail on the pa on the package. It's it falls here But the detail is over here I mean you could really say it's you've got an orange here orange and then orange All right, so even if you just look at it 
Like if we did something like this. I know I said we were just going to run through these, but I think that this will be useful for anybody wanting to learn design. something like that I mean if you just look at those elements I could have blocked them out differently I think in a future video I'll do something like this but you can already see kind of like a rhythm you know if I was to trace out just the if I was just to trace out the silhouette of this character you would start to see the rhythm there all right this is awesome I mean I think he I think on um, on ArtStation, he said this was a, this was something he did with AJ. Um, but I mean, it's just it's so badass. So I think this was a collaboration with AJ, which I'm gonna do. The next video is gonna be on Anthony Jones, because Anthony Jones is he's amazing. He's he's really interesting to to look at for design. Yeah. So you have this. You have that asymmetrical element over here. You have that asymmetrical element over here. This is more symmetrical up top. But that's how he keeps it balanced. You know, you could say this is symmetry up here, and then you could say that these two, the two arms, and then this satchel that's over to the side, and then this element over here. Yeah, it's going back and forth. Right? So that's kind of the way it is that you want you can have the the viewer move their eye through the character design. I guess this is it colored. Freaking awesome. Oh, here we go. Here's the line work of that first piece. Let's take a look at this. Look at the line. Yeah, I mean, so he has these these shapes drawn with lines that are really not that clean. I mean, it's it's kind of surprising. Like if we look at this stuff, <laughs> this is kind of the way that my lines look. Like they don't look they don't look clean. You know, if you look at somebody else, like a like a manga guy, the lines look way way more precise than than this. But from a distance, I mean. It, it gives it this feel, this very hand-drawn feel to it. Like when we, oh my god, that one's awesome. Hold on, let me jump to, that one's awesome too. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, that's like some ghost in the shell. It's very symmetrical in the design. It's really cool. Bam. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find Okay So this is the grayscale version This is where he's just putting in the lights So, we, so we've seen three versions of it, right? We've seen But the line work is still it's still pretty rough. I mean, it's it's not perfect, you know. And that I think that just goes to show that as long as the line work is like a consistent width throughout the piece, then it it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, you know. Like I, I love the way that he's left these lines in here in order to kind of create this detail. You know, he he clearly has like some sort of a texture brush that he's using on the armor. He's using some sort of a brush on the armor, and he's doing a very good job with that. Um, but yeah, this is amazing. Okay, well, I think I've <laughs> spent about 20 minutes of your time, but I I hope you've enjoyed it. 
and uh, stay tuned for the next one. The next one's going to be on Anthony Jones. And uh, thanks for watching. If you if you have a suggestion for another artist or something else to look at, just leave a comment. And feel free to like and subscribe the video. Uh, thank you.